Hello and welcome to Night and Games. Today we're going to be taking a look at a very cool indie game. Uh, that's right everybody, we have been inducted into the Kerbal Space Program. That's right astronauts. We are uh, going to be exploring the space around the planet Kerbin. Uh, this is a really cool game. It's kind of like a cross between Minecraft, Gary's Mod, and Spore, I guess. Um, Gary's Mod, because you're going to be building your own rockets and spaceships out of individual little parts that you're going to snap together. Uh, Spore, because you're going to be uh, exploring space. And uh, Minecraft, it's actually like Minecraft in a lot of ways. Um, it's being developed in the same way that Minecraft was, in that it's been sold and released prior to it actually being finished. We're currently in a very early alpha build. Um, and uh, like Minecraft, there's going to be new content added as new updates are made. Um, and also, like in Minecraft, there is no real goal currently in this game. Uh, you kind It's one of these sort of make-your-own-fun kind of games. There's no end goals. You just do whatever it is you feel like doing. So I thought what we might do, first off, is I might just have you have a little look around some of the things I've done, show you some of the, some of the interesting things you can do in this game before we get on to a little uh, mission, as it were, that I've set up. Now I'm going to warn you right off the bat, uh, this current build of Kerbal Space Program is a little um, unstable, to say the least. It has an annoying tendency to crash every five minutes, uh, so I'm probably going to be doing a lot of editing on this video. You're going to see a lot of crazy clock wipes and shit as I try and cut away from crashes. Um, so this is the space center we have here. Um, this, uh, this is the hangar. This is where you build all of your rockets. There's the launch pad, but right now we're going to be going into uh, right here. All right, so uh, I thought what I would do here is just as sort of an introduction, show you some of the things I've built, some of the more challenging things I've accomplished in this game so far. Uh, the first thing I think I'm going to show you is my, let's see. Modular refueling station. There it is. Sorry about that. Um, this is a, a rather interesting thing. It's, it's basically a gas station in space. Uh, it's got every kind of fuel that's available in the game, which is pretty, pretty difficult thing to get up there because getting anything that weighs as much as a fuel tank into space is pretty challenging to lift all of that weight without using up the fuel in it too much. Yeah, a fueling station is actually one of the first things I tried to build in this game, which was probably really stupid. A lot of deaths. As you can see, it's it's essentially just a number of fuel tanks here. Uh, the larger ones, they're all... Actually, they're not all full, because I've used this multiple times so far. Um, check the resource and see how it's sitting. It's still got quite a bit of fuel in there. There are a few that have been emptied out, but essentially it's got uh, every type of fuel in the game. It's got the oxidizer and the liquid fuel in these big tanks. We've got a number of different sections that have uh, the monoprop fuel on them. There's three tanks down here, which is your thruster fuel. I think there's also a little one up here somewhere. Um, we've got electrical on here, so if, if we have any kind of an ion-powered ship, we can transfer electricity over to it from here. And uh, we've also got xenon gas tanks uh, somewhere on here. I can't remember, but they're on here somewhere, trust me. Um, so yeah, this was all built in a modular way. Oh yeah, it's also got a little escape capsule I put down here. It's got a, it's essentially just a little landing craft, but uh, yeah, I just slapped it on here because in addition to all this fuel, it's also got room for eight kerbals. Eight kerbals can sit up here in space if they want to. I think it's empty at the moment, but there might be anyone in here. Hello? Hard to say. Anyways. Uh, yeah, the, like I said, it was built in a modular way. I basically sent this up piece by piece and just attached every piece on As you can tell from its weird angles, it kind of... It's a little squirrely. But, um, yeah, it's got all these nice little docking ports on the side. So if you ever get a ship up into space 
and you're a little low on fuel to actually do anything useful you just fly up to here dock on any one of these multiple little sections and uh, you can fuel up and then go off on your business all right so on to the next thing anyone who hasn't played uh, this game before you might just be saying well what the hell is so difficult about this you managed to land a rocket in the ocean um, yeah I did um, <laughs> but there's something you should know about that ocean this uh, this is landed in on an ocean of a moon called lave and uh, that moon of lave as we see here orbits a gas giant called jewel and that gas giant uh, orbits way the fuck out on the hairy edge of the solar system. There's only one planet further out, and that's Elu. Just for reference, this is uh, Kerbin here. This is the planet that I came from. So we're way the hell out in the middle of nowhere. And basically, the, the way I was able to do this, it was actually surprisingly not that difficult to do. Um... In any other rocket, it probably would have been really challenging, but this is, we're going to be seeing a lot of this rocket. I'll, I'll be doing some more of this later. But this is sort of my standard lander now, because I like it so much. It's designed uh, to have two engines. Basically here, there's two engine nacelles on the side, and in the middle is this stock, and at the bottom right here, it's hard to see because it's underwater, but under here we have a clamping port, a uh, docking port, rather. Uh, down here so the basically the basically the way that I use this is I get this section into orbit and then I'll just send up a series of fuel tanks and interconnect them with uh, more docking ports and then I just have to dock this puppy onto that train of fuel tanks I, I believe to get this one here I had four or five of the largest fuel tanks attached to the back of it just dragging them like a train and dropping them off as I go one by one uh, so to reduce weight and and keep up the maneuverability and uh, I, it actually wasn't too difficult to get here I I did it I think it was the second time I tried to get here that I actually managed to do it so yeah it's pretty cool and like I said we're gonna be seeing some of this lander later because it's my favorite one it's it's so adaptable it can be used for just about anything and it's really stable but anyways, on to the next project. This is the last thing I want to show you, and this is by far the most difficult thing I think I've done in this game so far. Um, maybe it's just me, but I've had nothing but trouble trying to build these stupid space planes. <laughs> they are really difficult to build, really hard to get the balancing quite right, and to get enough fuel to be able to actually do anything with. Um, I think I must have built 20 or 30 planes and out of those 30 or so planes I only have two that actually made it into a stable orbit. Uh, this one is incredibly cool because uh, not only is it a fully functioning space plane, it's actually an SSTO space plane which stands for single stage to orbit which essentially means that this plane didn't need any kind of extra boosters or anything it didn't drop any weight as it went off it, it's exactly as it was when it took off which is incredibly difficult to do and it's actually I kinda just sorta stumbled on this design myself it just kinda fell together after having failed so damn much um, of course to be able to get it to where it is right now which is on the planet Eve which is the uh, the uh, Venus like planet in in this game uh, in order to get it here, I it didn't do it in a single stage, obviously. I got it to Kerbal's orbit in a single stage, got it into a nice stable orbit. Uh, but in order to get here, what I had to do was similar to what I did to get to Lave, except kind of backwards. Instead of this ship pulling a whole bunch of uh, fuel tanks, I had a whole bunch of fuel tanks sitting off of its nose and sort of have them pulling and this plane pushing at the same time. Uh, I spent just an incredible amount of time trying to build a space plane that had a docking port on the back so that it could pull a train of, of fuel tanks, but 
after like a dozen tries, I just figured that's that's never gonna fucking work. So I just instead I popped one in the front and it worked perfectly. We've got all these little uh, Ram air scoops here, which give us lots of air input when we're in an oxygen atmosphere to use in our tanks. And I've actually got two fuel tanks here, which are just specifically for the uh, air uh, air burning engines. Uh, and we've got two normal rocket tanks to run this this uh, toroidal aero spike. And uh, I actually I I kind of figured I'd be able to land and take off once I got here, but I completely forgot that this planet does not have any oxygen whatsoever. Oxygen intake is zero. There is no air here, so I kind of had to land it very carefully using my rocket spike here to, to keep airspeed up enough that I could land it safely. But yeah, that's that's pretty cool. It's it's a really nice little ship. So with that out of the way, I think that's given you a nice taste of what you can do in this game. I think it's time to move on to the main mission. We have a, a slightly more simplified uh, game file here. We just have the single thing here. This is a uh, very simple orbiter. It's the first one I've gotten up. Uh, it's in a very nice, rounded, stable orbit pretty close to round actually it's not perfect but it's not bad either um, very simple little orbiter nothing really spectacular about it um, however there is a single little snag with this particular one here and that snag is that it's completely out of fuel um, liquid fuel has gone oxidizer has gone it doesn't even have any thrusters on it, I don't think. I don't think it has anything on it at all, really. It's got a capsule, it's got a, it's got an engine, some solar panels to power the lights, and that's about it. However, it does have one thing, uh, apart from uh, good old Bill down here, who's horribly, horribly trapped uh, up, in, up in orbit. It does have a docking port here. So we can open this puppy up. It's going to be kind of hard to see, but there it is, the docking port, which means that we can rescue Bill. And I think that's what we're going to do today. We're going to we're going to try and rescue this son of a bitch. Um, now there are a few ways we can do this. Um, there's basically three ways I can think of to do this. Um, first two I'm really not interested in because they're kind of boring. Uh, the first one would be to take another v uh, vessel up here, dock with it, transfer some fuel to it, and then let it uh, land itself, which is possible. It could do it. This thing has a, a, a parachute on the on the capsule here. I don't think it's really designed very well for landing. I'm pretty sure the capsule would just tear off. I don't think there's any kind of decouplers or anything, but it would be survivable. We could do that. Uh, the second option would be to dock a vessel with it and then just using that second vessel pull this thing out of its orbit, drag it closer until uh, its orbit decays and uh, the whole thing drops in both will do it. But really, um, I'd rather keep this up here, kind of a testament. You know, it's the, the first orbiter I got up here, so I think I'd like to leave it if possible. So what I'm thinking of doing is build a vessel which we can bring up here we will dock i will get bill here my good friend bill to uh, escape here he'll walk out do a bit of a space walk uh, go over go over and enter the second vehicle we'll then detach and then the second vehicle will come into land so that should be interesting and on to the building process. Um, now I've sped this video up a bit here so that we're not watching me dick around for a half an hour with all these parts, but I thought I'd do this to give you a bit of a taste of how the uh, construction uh, gameplay goes in this game. Uh, to start off, we need to select a command pod, a capsule of some sort. You can either get a like, capsule for a space plane, uh, these ones are you know, manned flight, and then the ones at the bottom of the list are probe cores like a computer it'll fly itself uh, but we're just gonna go with a single 
occupancy command capsule. And uh, like I said, this is we're basically going to be building the same type of vessel that I used to get to lathe, uh, but with a few minor adjustments. Um, so right now we've got the capsule, a battery, and a flight computer. Flight computer is very important. It uh, really helps in the process. It can be done without it, but it's very difficult. Um, these are the monoprop fuel tanks, which is your thrusters. And uh, we'll be using thrusters for the docking procedure. And this is probably my favorite piece in the game. It looks so goofy and stupid, but it's so useful. It's a four-way connector. And we're going to use it to build out our nacelles here. And we'll add two more to the other end so we can uh, start building up those nacelle stocks down. And of course, since this is a single occupancy capsule, since we're trying to rescue someone, we're going to need some more space. So we'll put two more single occupancy capsules up there just to keep it balanced. And while we're here, we'll pop on some parachutes. Now, there's something I took a long time to figure out with uh, as far as parachutes, and that's uh, use drogue chutes. This is a drogue, actually, yeah, this is the drogue chute. Um, the basic, the idea behind it is that it will open earlier in your descent and slow you down so that when your main chutes open, they don't just tear off. So we're gonna put four drogue chutes on there, and I think in total it'll be like seven, seven mains. So it's probably a bit of overkill, but you know, at the end of the day, if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. So there's all the parachutes set. Um, and in the going with overkill, we're just going to stick on another monoprop tank just because we don't want to run out of monoprop fuel once we get up there because we're going to need it for docking. We're going to make sure we've got plenty there for docking. And now we get onto the actual fuel tanks. Now we're going to have three fuel tanks of this size and that will essentially make up the, uh, the pod that we're going to take up. Now we're going to interconnect these with some fuel lines, which will basically let this uh, landing capsule here act as though it, it had one large tank, more or less, uh, instead of just the three separate ones. So now they're all interconnected. They'll all be drawing fuel from each other. And on the center stock, here's the important part. We're going to put the docking port right there. Uh, this basically means that we're going to have to sort of back into uh, any kind of thing we want to dock to. And these are the engines we're going to be using our lander. They're pretty uh, pretty small, pretty simple ones. They only do, I think, a thrust of 50, which compared to the mainsail rockets is pretty low. They're good for in orbit, pushing around, but that's about it. And these are our thrusters. Um, we're going to keep these mainly on the uh, central stock of the uh, ship here. That'll ensure that we have a good range of motion and everything's... We don't have any kind of crazy asymmetric thrust when we are maneuvering. If we were to put them on the sides, it might screw it up a bit. So we're just keeping it simple, keeping them on the central stock. And uh, as far as building, this is like the, the last stage we've done here. And... This is where things are going to start getting weird. Because uh, in order to get this into space, we're going to have to build all of our boosters onto these two nacelles. Which means we're going to have two stacks of boosters, which is kind of weird. Most people just do one and build up outside and around them. I'm going to do two individual boosters on each side. Because if you're to connect to that docking port, it creates a really weak connection and it has a tendency to break away and stuff. So. We're going to select these. These are the large fuel tanks, and we're going to put the mainsail rocket engines on there. They're the uh, pretty much the most powerful ones in the game. They're not very fuel efficient, but they're good for lifting. And incredibly important is something, if anyone out there looking to play this game, use these a lot. They're awesome. They're the uh, structural struts. They add a great deal of uh, structural integrity to your ship. They'll help hold it together. And we desperately need it on these booster rockets because if we were to take off without this, essentially this entire ship would just do the splits and break apart. And 
yeah, on those those first things I popped down there on top of the fuel tanks, by the way, are called decouplers. Uh, they're just a segment that will detach during the staging of the ship. So that's more or less the second to last stage. Put on a couple more decouplers. And this will be the third to last stage. I think this will be in, in total like a four stage rocket, I think. So a couple more main sails. And once again, we're going to strut this thing out again. Probably don't need quite as many as before. Struts aren't very attractive, but they really help to hold it together. And they're not that heavy either, so it's always good to, if in doubt, strut it out. So that is the... Uh, it'll actually be the second stage when we're taking off, but... And we're going to use these... These are a different kind of decoupler. These are a radial decoupler, I believe. And uh, they work in the exact same way as those stack decouplers that we've been putting on, except they just attach to the outside. So it lets us put a ring of uh, engines on the outside, which will make up our first uh, stage of the rocket. So we're going to be putting three extra booster rockets on the outside of each of these tanks. So we're just going to pop three here and another three on the other side. Try to make them as even as possible so that everything's thrusting as equally as it can. So we don't have any weird acceleration in weird directions and stuff. And not quite even. That's not bad. And so then we're just going to slap on some more mainsails on here. Now, I prefer to use liquid fuel tanks, but they're also solid ones. The difference being that uh, liquid fuel, you have a lot more control. You can turn them on and off. With a solid fuel booster, you have to turn it on and wait until it burns out. You can't shut it down. And a really important tip for using these types of uh, radial decouplers is strut them out like crazy. You're going to want to attach them. Uh, with struts to really increase the strength of them because otherwise they'll just kind of flop around and be kind of awkward and that's one of the really great things about struts too is that you can put them in between sections of your ship and they will detach with your decouplers they'll just break away nice and easily so they're great for increasing your the stability of your ship without you know having to actually build something crazy otherwise and we're actually going to also strut out uh, these different stages here as well. Because otherwise, if we don't put these struts in here, essentially the top half of our ship is just going to hula hoop the bottom half. Uh, which is not good. Eventually it'll just snap itself into pieces. So we're just going to kind of stick with that. So that's most of the stages done. Have I forgotten? Actually, we're going to probably want to strut out the top too otherwise it might be a little weak but it won't need quite as much so we'll just put a couple on here two and a couple more on the other side And there's also something else I've forgotten, which is the landing gears. If we ever want this thing to land, we'll have to put some landing struts on here. And this is the strongest landing strut that there is. It's the most robust, you would say. Um, the weaker one is quite a bit weaker, and it tends to be kind of springy. And it tends to snap off a lot, too, if, you, if you're not careful. So we'll go with that. And I also like to put uh, lights near the docking port so that when I'm trying to dock with something it kind of casts light on on the target makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing and to power those we are going to use a uh, type of generator it's a uh, radio scope thermoelectric generator something like that basically it's free energy now, I'm sure some of you have probably noticed that there's a couple points on here where I've completely screwed up my struts and they're going all weird. So basically, I'm going to cut away to when I've got them fixed. And here we are. Uh, all the struts have been sorted out. I've also added on these uh, 
uh, docking towers. I don't know what the hell they're called, but they'll release us when we launch. And I've also sorted out most of our staging. Um, actually, I should probably put those decouplers. Uh, get rid of that stage and get it down there. So we'll just put those in there. Um, basically, first stage, it will release our docking clamps here and fire the first outside six. Second stage, we'll detach those six and fire the two inner ones. Uh, next stage, we'll detach those two and fire the next. And the last stage, we'll detach our, our main section here, fire its engines and release, or actually activate its parachutes. So that's pretty much it. We are pretty much ready to go, ready to hit the launch pad. But I think we'll save that for next time. Uh, so that's about it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please subscribe, uh, like, leave a comment, other generally nice things. And uh, stay tuned, because next episode we're going into space. So until then, good night. Sweet internets.